let's talk about what translators who work with written materials do and where they typically work. A translator reads a written text in one language, called the source language, and reproduces it in the written form in another language, called the target language, conveying the stated and implied meanings, mood and style of the original text accurately, idiomatically and completely. A source language and the target language forms a language pair. For most translators, a target language will be their native language. A source language will be their second language. Translators usually work only in one direction, from their second language into their native language. They work for various government agencies, translation companies, and in the armed forces. The U.S. Department of State's Office of Language Services provides foreign language interpreting and translating support for the State Department, the White House, and other federal agencies. They have 19 direct hire diplomatic translators who work in about 15 different language pairs. The office also works with hundreds of independent contract interpreters and translators to ensure support in every language required. For example, this recent press statement by the Secretary of State Michael Pompeo posted to the U.S. Department of State website in English was translated into different languages by JTG translators. Here is Arabic, French, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. Translators also work as linguists or language analysts, and besides providing decision-makers with accurate translations, they analyzed and synthesized large amounts of information. Translators also do transcribing, that is, making full written copies of oral materials, dubbing, that is, inserting new soundtracks with a synchronized translation of foreign language speech into films, or subtitling, which is supplying translation of foreign language speech into films, usually displayed at the bottom of the screen. In addition, translators with graphic design experience might offer DTP, desktop publishing services, Translators with web design or software experience might offer web design and localization services adapting content to a specific market and SEO, search engine optimization services. Translators with a writing background might become editors, reviewing and revising written material for clarity, accuracy and fitness for its purpose. They can become copywriters, writing text for marketing purposes, And finally, translators with administrative experience can become translation project managers and manage translation work of other translators. What about interpreters? What do they do and where do they work? An interpreter does pretty much the same thing as a translator, but in a different modality. He or she listens to a spoken message in the source language and renders it orally in the target language in real time and for immediate use. Interpreters usually talk in terms of A, B, and C languages. An interpreter's native language is called an A language. The second active language is called a B language. An interpreter works in two directions, both from and into languages in his or her language pair. Some interpreters may have one or more C languages, which are the languages they understand, understand well, and can work from, but not into. They are called passive languages. As you already know, interpretation can occur simultaneously with the speech being delivered or consecutively, when the interpreter reconstructs segments of the speech, a sentence or two from memory, or a larger segment of the speech from notes. Simultaneous interpreting is primarily used in formal or large group settings like international conferences and summits, diplomatic conventions and courtrooms. It is often used at the United Nations and for presidential speeches. Simultaneous interpreters usually work in an interpreting booth or may also use portable interpretation equipment or may use whispering, called chuchotage, using the French term. Take a look at this photograph of a UN Security Council session. Can you spot UN interpreters' booths in the back, in the top right corner? And here, next to the Swedish filmmaker Johannes Niholm, is an interpreter using the whispering mode of interpretation. Consecutive interpreting is typically used for press or research conferences, after-dinner speeches, courtrooms and medical appointments. The interpreter translates the speaker's words, whether in short or long chunks, during pauses that the speaker deliberately makes. Since the capacity of the human memory is limited, interpreters may need to make notes, which help them reconstruct the main points of the speech if the chunks are long and pauses are few. 
and render it in the target language. So we differentiate between the classic or true consecutive interpretation that relies on note-taking and short consecutive interpretation in which taking notes is not necessary because segments are very short. In this photograph, you can see two interpreters taking notes in the background at a meeting between President Trump and the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Can you guess which mode of interpreting they use? Interpreters typically work in the government, hospitals, schools and courtrooms. They work for private companies, conference organizers, international organizations like the World Trade Organization or the United Nations, and its specialized agencies like UNESCO, the World Health Organization, and others. They may be hired as staff interpreters or as freelance interpreters and travel to different locations or working remotely. Translating and interpreting are challenging careers, as each requires a high level of language skills, knowledge, and abilities in order to understand and deliver correct meaning and nuances. But with challenges come rewards, the joy of connecting people through language, flexible work hours, and competitive pay. Besides, for many professional translators and interpreters, their job is not just a job, but a way of life. 